New at midday, a big update to local transportation projects in the area. City leaders just finished discussing dozens of possible projects that could be taken up by Hampton Roads Transit over the next 20 years. They discuss funding and which projects should get priority when it comes to spending your tax dollars. Tenure Side's Brandy Cummings is live now in Chesapeake. Brandy? Don, you know that meeting wrapped up just a few moments ago. Uh, there were representatives here from all of the uh, cities and counties in Hampton Roads talking about those different products and talking about the future of transportation here in Hampton Roads. In fact, this was a retreat uh, and this is a, you know, they ha meet monthly. But one of the special things about this particular day is that Secretary of Transportation Aubrey Lane was here and he is joining us now live to talk more about what transportation in Hampton Roads will look like. Secretary Lane, first, thank you for being with us. Thanks for having me. And tell us the main message that you wanted to send to Hampton Roads leaders today. Well, I wanted to bring two messages. One, explain to them how the new legislation and working with the state, how their projects could be scored and looked at better to attract state funding, but also to bring some realism into the process. Uh, there are additional monies, but not nearly enough to do everything. So wanted to paint a picture that would be helpful, but realistic in helping the uh, area. Governor McAuliffe has campaigned on unlocking transportation and the economy in Hampton Roads and governing that way. Want to make sure that uh, was supporting them uh, in their efforts to do so. And we understand that there were 200 projects, more than 200 projects submitted, uh, and of that, they were scored on certain levels. And some of the higher projects uh, were listed here. There were some areas that weren't listed. Um, but talk about a little bit about one of the key things I think you said was talking about tolls and the impact of tolls in the future. As we've talked about, there is a lot of concern about tolls, but let folks at home know just how they will play into the future development of transportation in Hampton Roads? Well, unfortunately, there's just not enough money for these large bridge and water crossings to be uh, constructed. They're billions of dollars without additional revenues, and that typically means tolls. But we can be smart about that. I mean, a couple things we've made, uh, I think the state uh, years back uh, did some things that we could have done better. We had different policies. For instance, if we have a toll, we always ought to have a free alternative. Uh, so if we put capacity on a particular bridge, all we should have a free lane. And maybe we're talking about hot lanes where you have a choice to pay. Also, I don't think there should be any more pre-tolling of a facility until the capacity is actually in place. So those are things that uh, I think we can be much smarter about, uh, be more beneficial because under hot lanes, for instance, if you have high occupancy vehicle passengers, three or more, you always go free. Or there's always a free alternative. And transit, multimodal solutions have to be a part of these water crossings because it, we understand there's a burden on some uh, of people and therefore they ought to have different options. So that's the type of things I think you'll see from the McAuliffe uh, administration going forward in terms of uh, how we finance these. I made the comment in here, uh, Governor McAuliffe and I are supporters of public-private partnerships, but only if they are a better deal than the state can do it themselves. And so we're looking at all the options. We'll do that again uh, down here. And if a publicly financed deal and an HR TAC, the new accountability commission could be a big part of that, using their revenues instead of outside sourcing revenues. If that's a better deal, we ought to take a look at that to keep the revenues here in Hampton Road. So those are the type of things we'll be exploring. Our decisions will be based on the facts and what's best for the taxpayers and the motorists, not ideologies of always thinking that private business can do it better. And just a couple other things we want to talk about really quickly. Just moments ago, we talked to Portsmouth Mayor Kenny Wright. He applauded some of your comments that you said in here, uh, in essence, admitting to some mistakes in the past. Talk more about uh, what you believe happened during that process. Well, I won't call them mistakes. Uh, I think it was different policies. And a couple of them I mentioned, I think we would think were not good policies. but. One of the things that uh, Governor McAuliffe uh, uh, instructed me to do was we reformed our public-private partnership process, the P3 process. So now uh, we have to justify it's in the best interest of, of the uh, taxpayers. For instance, the downtown Midtown tunnel project uh, was supposed to be $200 million of revenues brought in during pre-construction, during the construction phase, before the capacity. Well, the state's already paid $212 million to buy the tolls down. Not a very good policy, very costly policy. So what we'll be looking at is the different alternatives, making sure we have good policies, because that also has financial considerations, um, and not always being driven by an ideology. In other words, look at the hard facts. Let's look at what the state could do it through bonding and working with HR TAC. Uh, 
if that's a better alternative than a private partner, then, then that's what we're going to do. Certainly if a private partner comes up and, and can operate better, we'll consider that. But we're just not going to do it without improving to us uh, that what's in the best interest. And as a matter of fact, the new law requires the Secretary of Transportation now to confirm and sign a certificate saying it's in the best interest of the motorists and the taxpayers. If not, I've broken the law. There will be no more confusion as to who's responsible for these bad decisions in the future. I welcome that responsibility. I think it's incumbent upon us. Our investors are our taxpayers, and we should uh, be accountable to them. Well, Secretary Lane, I appreciate your time. Uh, and uh, again, a lot ta discussed here. Uh, Don, and we're going to send it back to you. And of course, we'll have more and uh, explain a little more details about some of these projects coming up tonight, starting on Wavy News 10 at 4. Back to you.